Hi, my name is Chris Talbot, and I'm here with the Museum of AR in my hometown in our launch city of San Francisco, California. So this is the second video in our development series, and today I want to show you a new layered art type exhibit and then do a deep dive on best practices and placement standards to make sure that we're picking locations that are going to display our art as accurately as possible. So let's get started. So what you see here is uh, multiple 2D images layered in 3D space. So to be able to accomplish this, I recommend artists think about their art as paintings on sheets of glass, and then we add depth by putting space in between them. So I'm going to pull up Photoshop to kind of illustrate for you uh, the way these are constructed. And you don't need to use Photoshop. If you're a traditional artist, uh, you can use a light box to align your layers or even tape your art to a window to kind of align things and then just make marks on every page so we know how they go when, when they're scanned in. So the opportunities for this in world building are immense. If you imagine a, a hexagon and we have you know, six separate built out images that we're piecing together like a pie. Um, we can build a complete world surrounding the viewer. And that to me is really exciting and worth the extra uh, time that it takes to build this type of exhibit. So now let's go over a few of the placement guidelines that we need to work around. So this is one of the walls that we're looking at placing art on. Uh, when you look at it in kind of a high contrast computer view here, uh, we want to place the art right here. The problem is, is this texture is easily found, you know, a bunch of other places. So what this is going to amount to is basically the art jumping around and it won't look the same for everybody. If we choose this unique place down here that is unlike any of the rest of it, uh, with the exception of maybe right here, can be found all the way up, um, this will allow us to reference this small object or this small pattern while placing the art over here off to the side. The only real obstacle we have here is that this should be on the same plane. So if you're using this and this is flat then you want it to be sitting flat with your art that's going to be over here so on to the next example um, this is from this is a placement from the drip up and this is the masonic temple up across from grace cathedral so this te texture this marble wall you know it's got a lot of things we try and shy away from such as you know the brick pattern but really, when you look at this high contrast, it's very unique. And you're going to be able to pick any of these areas to place something. There's a little bit of a glare right here. And that's a problem uh, because of the reflectivity of the surface. But it's not a big enough problem to really deter us away from this location. Uh, seeing as how it faces north, it's not going to have crazy shadows on it. Um, Buildings that do face north and south, or placements that face north and south, are going to uh, be better suited because of the shadows won't be moving around on them throughout the day. And really what we're aiming for here is persistence. We want this spot that we're scanning to load our art to look the same every time. So that will lead to our art looking the same every time. So this is really the best case scenario. This is a plaque on the ground uh, near the Apple Store in what used to be Levi's Plaza. And it's an existing sculpture and it's an existing piece of art uh, that people go and visit. So you can see some of the scarring around the edges. And, uh, you know, if it gets wet, it looks a little bit different. But really, the bulk of this right here is going to look the same. Uh, always and it's already aged so chances of it changing drastically are you know very small so this is really the ideal spot next I want to go to your Buena Center for the Arts and this is right next to uh, SF MoMA you wouldn't think that this is a high contrast area up close in computer vision this is almost like a QR code uh, and really it is one of the more ideal situations for placing art 
because of all this uniqueness and really any small spot that I pick you're not going to be able to replicate it anywhere else on the rest of this wall. So during the last video, uh, you know, we went over this placement and placed it on a high contrast area, which was this brick wall. But in the end, uh, you know, when I was actually building the exhibit, I had problems getting it to stay and track correctly. So really what I ended up doing was finding an area with text. It's all about problem solving here. And although these high contrast bricks didn't really work out in the long run, I was able to find, you know, something nearby that we could anchor this to. Uh, another example here uh, would be Brandon Joseph Baker's art that he has to be placed in this alleyway in North Beach. And when looking for an anchor to place this art, I chose these two angels. Now, these are off the ground. Um, really, ideally, they would be about five feet off the ground or less. But really, this is ideal because above it is going to be the art as you can see here and and the closer your anchor is to the art the better off uh, you're going to be with tracking and it's going to be more consistent so i want to thank everybody for being patient and staying tuned through all this and uh everybody Smash. stay safe out there